Well, hello. Yeah. Welcome back at the Hydrogen Fuel Cells Europe here at the Hannover Messe 2022 in the public forum. Thanks for being here, dear audience. Please join us for the upcoming interview. Have a seat, get a refreshment, and enjoy the next talk. Um, there was a change, so I'm going to say it um, now correctly who is here. We have from Plug Power, um, we talk about the Tropic, a true end-to-end -end green H2 network. And please welcome with me on stage, Hector Maza. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Love to be here. So um, maybe let's start easy. What does Plug Power do? <laughs> I guess the real question is what do they, they don't do. Now, today we are a very uh, complete entity. I think what we have is end-to-end -end solutions on hydrogen. So we go from the green electron all the way out to whatever our customer wants to do. They might need mobility. They might need the hydrogen molecule for a specific industrial application. They might want to go back to electrons to move something else with a stationary power in fuel cells. So we do everything in between. So Plug Power really has the know-how on the PEM technology for both fuel cells and electrolyzers and has keep on adding little by little all the other components in between, like uh, cryogenics, liquefaction, etc. Okay, that sounds like a, a lot of variety, a lot of possibilities. Yes. Um, where is Plug Power coming from? Where did you start? So Plug Power started about 20 years ago, uh, and they really started with a niche application, which was forklift trucks powered by fuel cells, displacing batteries that they traditionally have been moving uh, these forklift trucks, and even displacing any internal combustion uh, engines as well. Plug Power uh, invent, well, started with a technology that's uh, well known here, the PEM fuel cell, and then they moved on to incorporate all the other pieces. Today, Plug Power has about 52,000 forklift trucks servicing the major service centers of uh, Amazon, Walmart, Home Depot, Coca-Cola, BMW, all those companies are our current customers, and they really, what they want is they want productivity. So we service them by putting the forklift trucks and the infrastructure that comes with it to run the fuel cells with hydrogen. So these are hydrogen oxygen fuel cells. Okay, so it's, I really like it that it's, it started off with kind of moving boxes in warehouses. <laughs> yes. um, but uh, when you started, what is Plug Power doing? Uh, the variety was so much bigger. So you're doing so much more now. Yes. But um, I've heard you close some big deals. Can you maybe yeah. elaborate about a bit what happened? What, yeah, what I think they're do? public now. We can talk a little bit about those. We recently signed a 100 megawatt electrolyzer in Egypt for ammonia producing. Uh, then we also signed another one gigawatt electrolyzer for Europe. Uh, with a company well known H2 Energy and uh, moving basically for mobility on trucks in European markets, starting in Switzerland, your home country. So uh, that's going to be really exciting. We also have done uh, several joint ventures recently. Uh, you might have heard that we uh, started with a joint venture here. Hyvia is a joint venture, venture between Renault and uh, Plug Power. Uh, then we also did a joint venture with Acciona, uh, well known uh, uh, green electron company in Spain for the uh, Iberian Peninsula. And uh, we signed a joint venture uh, with SK Group in South Korea, making also the hub for a gigafactory there. Uh, they're really more interested in stationary power than in the electrolyzer side, but we do all of those things in there. Lastly, we, uh, we're finishing a joint venture with a company in Australia, uh, Fortescue, uh, which is well known in the mining industry, trying to decarbonize the mining industry as well. So we're playing a little bit in all the markets where hydrogen has a play, and uh, we basically bring to the customer whatever they want. We're not stuck to trying to sell a piece of equipment to someone, we're really trying to solve a problem. Moving boxes, cleanly, increase productivity, whatever the customer needs will adapt. So we could be maybe giving them the equipment so they can do it themselves, or maybe we just invest our money, to put the infrastructure together to actually service them in the way they need. And um, in the end, it's all about decarbonizing the planet, right? Yes, I mean, uh it sounds like huge projects, also yes. lots of projects um, at the, at the t same time. Can you give us some time frame, um, because you just mentioned like five, six different projects going on around the world. Sure. When, when were deals closed? What's the time frame for those different projects? So uh, these deals have been closing all over the last two years. I myself come from a company that was an acquisition for Plug Power. Which, uh, which became the electrolyzer division of Plug Power, which brought the, the PEM technology and the electrolyzer side. Uh, in terms of uh, size and, and timing, 
We today are the biggest user of hydrogen in the U.S., the, the biggest user of liquid hydrogen. And as we used to buy from IGCs, then we decided we can make it ourselves. We can liquefy it. We acquired the liquef liquefaction technology from uh, United Hydrogen that became plug power as well. We uh, also acquired recently a cryogenic technology for trucking. So we now put make the hydrogen from green electrons. We uh, organize long-term PPA agreements uh, for uh, green electrons from major renewable sources, whether it's wind, solar, or, um, or hydro. And then we turn that into hydrogen, and then the hydrogen we liquefy, and we can put in trucks, and then truck it out to all our existing customers of material handling division, or we can simply use the hydrogen in a gaseous form, putting on a pipe, and sending out to maybe a user like an ammonia producer, methanol, or a refinery, etc. In terms of timing, 2025, instead of consuming 52 tons per day of hydrogen ourselves, we're going to be producing 500 tons per day. And uh, we have quite aggressive, uh, I would say, uh, geometric uh, growth in this, in this environment. But even us growing at that speed are not going to be enough for this market. We certainly are trying, trying to be, or, or, or uh, targeting being the category king in the hydrogen market, becoming an end-to-end -end solution. But in, in the end, you do what the customer needs. So. Really interesting because you start kind of to integrate the whole process within the company, right? You start with the warehouse, uh, moving boxes like the forklift trucks, and now you're slowly, slowly integrating all the steps before also within the company. Yeah, well, it, it is the opportunity that hydrogen brings. When you want to store energy, you, we have plenty of energy right now with renewables and hydrogen, in, 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 uh, I'm sorry, in wind and solar. The problem is where do you put one gigawatt hour of energy? The only place you can put it for five minutes or for five years is hydrogen. And then if you make that hydrogen molecule into the pipeline, then you're using the pipeline as your storage. Hydrogen is compressible. You can put X amount of hydrogen in the pipeline, or you can put eight times X in the same pipeline. And then the pipeline can also help you transport it to far away locations. For example, we can go 1,000 kilometers or about 600 miles with about 15 cents of cost by pushing the molecule. But if you try to do the same with electrons, it will take you a lot more cost, you'll have a lot more losses, and you have to put all the copper in. So in the end, we have uh, some other developments that haven't really hit the news yet, but uh, if you start thinking, what's the future of energy tomorrow? The future of energy will be having your wind turbine out in the ocean, and instead of having a big wire connecting all these wind turbines and coming with that power to land, we might just put an under, under, underground cable without the cable, we have the pipe, just take the copper out, leave the pipe, and bring in those molecules all the way to land at pressure. One of the virtues of our technology is that you can produce hydrogen at pressure from the start, cleanly at five nines purity. And that's something most people can't do. Okay, that sounds really good where it's going. Um, you've mentioned also the plug ecosystem. Can you maybe elaborate a bit about what is exactly the plug ecosystem? So a little bit of what we are showing a little, uh, on our booth. Our booth, by the way, is C60 back there. Um, we are making alliances with companies that are complementary to us, and in some cases strengthening our own company by acquiring pieces of them or investing into those companies. We are putting right now about, we have $5 billion to invest in infrastructure. We have invested about $800 million so far. We're, st we're starting out with a hydrogen network all over the U.S. We have announced publicly five 100 megawatt locations where we're going to be electrolyzing and creating about, I hate to talk about megawatts, it's really 20, 40, or 60 tons per day of hydrogen in semi-centralized locations in five nodes today. Publicly, we have announced five. There's many more in the pipeline, and uh, no pun intended. And then what we do is we liquefy it in those locations and then take it to our next division, which is our energy division, which takes that molecule, makes it liquid, makes it available to all our existing customers out there, whether it's a Walmart distribution center or a Amazon distribution center or whomever. We can bring it to them now in cryogenic form with our tanks drop it into the infrastructure that we have already set up for them for the last 10 years. And then from there, we can have our own uh, boil-off and dispensers at 350 bar for the forklift trucks. But just like we do that, we can bring that to an industrial customer. So if there's an ammonia customer out there that needs 500 megawatts, sorry, 220 tons of hydrogen per day, we can easily say, okay, you really want the molecule, correct? Yes. You want to make the investment on this piece of hardware so you can make your own uh, hydrogen? Most cases, the answer is not really. Uh, can, so that's where we come in and say, okay, this is part of our ecosystem. This is part of our, of our network. We can make the investment, put in together with the customer or maybe by ourselves, build, own, and operate that large electrolyzer 
inside the facility of that ammonia plant or methanol plant or even your refinery. And then, of course, we have to make an agreement the next 10 years or 20 years of your, of your uh, uh, business, you're going to be buying the molecule at X amount of price. And that X amount of price, it is limited to what do you get for electricity cost. But we're also making agreements, partnerships right now with all kinds of uh, uh, utilities out there to bring the green electron and convert it into green hydrogen, and then we can have green ammonia or green methanol or whatever else you need to. Okay, so you actually change the way you collaborate with the client or what you can offer to the client? Or yeah, we, we come from a, from a business model where we used to make the core of the technology, which was our stack, our PEM stack. And we used to sell those stacks. People would integrate those stacks into larger pieces of equipment. And we said, wait a second, we can do that. So we started building the, the, that piece of equipment. Oh yeah, let's sell this to customers. In the end, the customers don't want to be dealing with 200 moving parts inside a box. And they don't really know how to do it either. But they would love us to take care of that. So then we say, okay, the customer really wants to move boxes. Or the customer really wants the molecule itself to make another molecule like ammonia. Why don't we make it simple for them? Why don't we come in and build everything around it set it up in maybe their location, maybe our location, have a way, a safe way to bring it to them at the, the, the way they like it, whether it's at pressure or whether it's liquid, and then maybe they don't have a way to dispense it, so we can put in the dispenser units as well. So basically, that's what we're doing to facilitate the entry point of hydrogen replacing all your combustion uh, hydrocarbons that we have out there. So ideally, what we want to do is displace all the gray hydrogen out there little by little, and eventually displace all the hydrocarbons that we have outside. We don't have to have them. There's, there's better technologies. Not necessarily batteries, but fuel cells are batteries without the weight, if you want to think about it, without the lithium. I really like it because also when I'm coming from the innovation industry, so it's more like you're looking what's actually the problem, yeah. what's actually the need, right? And then you provide the solution because usually they don't need this, they need something else, so you provide it. That's, yeah, that's really good. We really try to put ourselves in, in our customers' shoes. Our customers don't want to become experts necessarily on hydrogen or electrolyzers or even fuel cells. But they, they are experts in moving things around. They are experts on being on time. They are experts on productivity. So how can we help that productivity to continue? Maybe we can bring it in a clean fashion, helping ourselves from what we know on hydrogen, what we know in storing, what we know in dispensing, and what we know in converting that into the right phase, whether it's liquid, gas, what's most uh, easy for them to use, and what's the best total cost of ownership of that molecule that we can bring to them. Nice. Um, maybe to the audience, are there any questions? Yes. Thank you. Uh, can you score or rank the safety risk of hydrogen? Obviously, hydrogen is is used since long. Yeah, for for you it's no problem. But if you compare this hydrogen to gasoline or so, yes, thank you very much. Um, that has been one of the biggest challenges: having to educate people who are not used to hydrogen. Uh, 100 years ago, 120 years ago, everybody said, "What are you going to do? What you're going to put a barrel of petrol in a car? Then you're going to run 60 kilometers an hour. You're going to face another one. You're going to." Light and you're going to have this big explosion. The problem was that we did not have many examples besides the Hindenburg out there, and, uh, and people just thought hydrogen is dangerous. The reality is that hydrogen can be safely stored, safely produced, safely dispensed, and we do it every day. Today we do 52,000 refuelings a day, every single day. Think about what that is, 52,000 refuelings, full refuelings in two minutes, three minutes, because we can run eight hours with one charge of one kilogram in a forklift truck. Eight hours nonstop. If you try to do that with batteries, the last hour you just slow down and you can't really do it. We do it safely every single day. We envision the way the customers are growing that we're going to need to do 10 times this in the next three years. As I said before at the beginning of the talk, it's not about just us. Yes, we want to be and we are possibly the category king today, but it's all about all these 40 plus companies that I see around us trying to solve the same problem. How do we do it safely? How do we do it economically viable? How do we do it without subsidies? That's the point of what we're trying to do today. In the end, safe, yes, number one. Number one priority, safety. Now, can we do it in the same amount of time that everybody else expects from us as they're used to filling up their car? Yes, we can. Uh, we do it at 700 bar for cars. We do it at 350 bar for pretty much everything else. Trains, we have Alstom now running on trains. We provided electrolyzers for that application. 
we have uh, uh, cars. We, if you walk a little bit uh, about 100 yards that direction, you'll see Ivia, our partner uh, Renault, making that last delivery of the last, we call it the last mile. In reality, it's the last 500 kilometers in a one charge with six kilograms of hydrogen. And these are your, your, your basic vans that are doing most of the deliveries to your homes today in, uh, in your uh, uh, Amazon world these days, right? So we do it safely. We know how to do it. We have that expertise. We're bringing more and more expertise on how to handle the hydrogen how to liquefy it, how to make it more compact. We increase current densities in our stacks so we can make it even smaller and cheaper. And we do the same on the, on the fuel cell side. So I think we have the highest unparalleled efficiency in our stacks, lowest total cost of ownership. It's not about CapEx, it's about total cost of ownership of the molecule. Thank you for the question and also, of course, for your answer. Looking at the time, we come to an end, unfortunately. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here, Hector Massa. My pleasure. A and big round of applause for you. Muriel, thank you very much.